It is new product time. New, new, new. Here's new products. That's the new song. All right, let's get this going. We're, we'll get through some of these really of fast. Okay. But I do want to talk about the First up, this is a PS2. A PS2 connector. connector. I really like this PS2 connector. So we're actually going to get a whole bunch of PS2 um, accessory products in the store. A really nice PS2 keyboard that's like small. Yeah. A PS2 trackpad. A PS2 barcode scanner. A PS2 mag stripe reader. And the thing that's really nice about PS2 is compared to USB, any microcontroller can do PS2. It's a digital SPI-like-ish, I4T-ish protocol, and there's like tons of Arduino and, and basic stamp and propeller examples. So it's a really easy way to uh, connect you know, digital stuff like this keyboard or a mouse to a microcontroller. So this connector, uh, I like this connector, it's panel mount. So there's two holes here, so it's really easy to panel mount because you don't have to like attach, you know, drill holes in it. There's two holes, and it's a little bit set back, so it's kind of nice. It can fit into a, a panel. You just drill a hole in it. And it's got colored wires, so that's really easy to use. And, I, you know, in the product list listing, I have, you know, which wires, which connection. This is a PS2 connector. It's a DIN Mini 6, a 6, uh, yeah, Mini DIN connector, and it just plugs in, basically. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So we got this connector in, and then, you know, you can really easily strip the wires a little bit, maybe tend them a little bit more, and uh, stick them in a breadboard. So it makes a very easy way, because otherwise, you know, these connectors, they do have uh, other connectors, but they're not breadboard-friendly. So this is the only real breadboard-friendly connector we could find. Okay. Next up, breadboard-friendly switch. Yeah, this one's pretty simple. It's just a switch. But, you know, we have buttons and stuff, and so we thought maybe people would like some switches. So one wanted to know, it's only PS2 when it's a keyboard or a mouse interface. That was for the previous part. Is that true, or can you do other things over this? Um, I don't know any other protocols that use a DIN 6, but there's a lot of different PS2 devices out there. Not just mouse or keyboard. Um, like I said, mag stripe readers, yeah. barcode readers, um, track pads. But it's most Q-cat. commonly Someone known... Someone said Q-cat. Q-cat. Yeah, there's, but it's most commonly known for... Uh, keyboard and mice. I still actually use uh, PS2 keyboards um, yeah, because like the computers we have have slots for them and so it frees up a USB slot mm-hmm. and they're about the same price. Okay, so we got this uh, breadboard friendly um, yeah. switch. switch. Do you want to show it over the... Yeah, sure. I was going to show it. So it's, click, click, uh, click. it's nice because it's got three pins, so it's a single pull double throw. Uh, you plug into a breadboard and then you know the middle pin connects either the right pin or the left pin. And it snaps back and forth, and it's got a, a nice like one millimeter long actuator. And uh, once in the breadboard, you can you can easily snap it back and forth without too many problems. Okay, headers. Yeah, these are some three pin wide headers. So yeah, we actually got these for uh, a secret project, but I ended up not using this um, this size header, so I had a whole bunch of them left over. But they can be really handy. They're they're break apart. But they're uh, three pins wide, so when you break them apart, you just have to be a little bit careful because um, yeah. you, know, you don't want to you want to have a straight cut, so use something really sharp. But uh, 0.1 inch by 0.1 inch, good for you know if you have sensors or servos, you want to connect to something, anything that's three pins wide. Yep. Um, next up, this is the Ruby on Rails badge. So for the folks, this is a Ruby badge. It's but most people do Ruby on Rails. Yeah. So um, we this don't want to judge if you just want to do plain up Ruby. Yeah. So this is this just came in a lot lot of requests for this, so we did it, and it's beautiful. It looks like a giant yes. Ruby. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Um, next up, I'm kind of excited about this for all the .NET peeps out there. This is the Netduino Go. Go. Yeah, this is a new thing. Chris Walker emailed me and was like, hey, you should yeah. totally carry this thing. And I was like, okay. And I haven't had a moment to plug it in. I don't have a .NET um, Yeah. You know what's funny is we have, pretty, we, re- we have pretty much all the platforms that people like to do um, microcontroller work and all sorts of things. But once in a while people say, oh, you know, you guys just do Arduino stuff. But meanwhile, we have all the BeagleBone stuff we have. Later on, we're going to be talking about the Pi stuff. We have the Chumbi board. We have the Pinguino, which is a PIC. And we have .NET Platform. So um, we like we like to have a big tent, as they say, for yeah. microcontrollers. And I'm excited because there's a lot of people that are coming at electronics in all different ways. And they come with skill sets, like you know, C Sharp, for instance, yeah. or .NET stuff. And so I'm kind of excited about this. I want to put this together. Yeah. So um, I can show this. You can show photos. I can show it on yeah. the overhead. Um, so this is the main board. And if I believe correctly, it's a 512K. It says an STM32F405. I don't remember the exact specs on this. Um, it's on the product page. But um, basically, it's the same microcontroller with micro USB slot and you know, little reset button. 
or just a button. And then it's got these um, connectors that are 10 pin and they look like a 0.05 inch spacing and they use these cute little cables. So they, they you know, they're a little smaller than 0.1 inch, but uh, looks like they're, they're pretty sturdy cables, so it's not a big deal. And, and they use um, ribbon connectors. And then they have a bunch of different uh, attachments. So the, the most basic one is like, you know, there's an RGB LED. And so this is the LED in the center, and then it connects with this wire. There's mounting holes. And then there's a little microcontroller, which is a ST, I can't read it. It's a little, it's a little ST, T-cell microcontroller. And it just communicates back and forth using, I don't know, I squared C or, or SPI or something. And it, uh, it controls this LED using an object. And then there's a button. And then there's also this potentiometer. You can twist it back and forth. And so there's a, this is a starter pack uh, that we decided to get that has a bunch of different sensors, like you know the button LED, um, the potentiometer, and also this kind of interesting thing. This is the, sort of their shield base. And the idea behind the shield base is that this has a in another ARM processor on it, and you can plug in Arduino shields, and it has all the pins that are equivalent to an Arduino, so you can use this with existing Arduino shields and they're, you know, they're apparently planning on porting over um, example code to use most of these popular shields. So this is very, very new and I think even the shield is still beta, but um, like it just got released a couple days ago. So it's very exciting and I yeah. think it's, a lot, some people just want to have like plug and play. They don't even want to solder. They just want to plug in cables. And so this kind of gives, you know, more flexibility in that. It's a little more expensive because you, know, you have to have a full circuit board yeah. with a cable instead of just a button. But for some people, you know, they're like, okay, well, I'm not a hardware guy. I'm a C sharp guy or girl, and I don't want to, I don't want to get out of my soldering iron. I just want to plug stuff together. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of additional platforms that we support, propeller stuff. Yeah, we got the propeller quick start. Yeah, we got the propeller and quick start along with the. Um, now we have a little proto machine. quick proto plate. Yeah. It comes as a kit. I put this one together. Uh, so it has a little prototyping area, so like a breadboard, and it has breakouts for all of the the pins. Over here. I guess I probably zoom in more. Yeah. Uh, so it has the breakouts for all the pins here, and then this little breadboarding area. This is where it connects to uh, the bottom here. Um, there's mounting holes that match up with the mounting holes underneath. There's DC power in here or DC power in here. Um, I think it takes yeah five to nine volts, and there's a regulator on the main board. And then there's uh, video and audio out because the propeller can do video audio pretty simply, so you can quickly connected to you know, the TV. For the folks who just got into all this, what's a propeller? A propeller is a four core, uh, eight core microcontroller that runs very high speed, so it's really good at multitasking and yeah. sort of high end, some high speed, high end uh, processing like audio and video, stuff that a slower microcontroller like an Arduino can't do. Yeah. Okay. You can also watch the Ask Engineer with Jess Gallman. Yeah. She, she talks all about. Made by Parallax. Made by Parallax. And she works for Parallax in the education and engineering department. Okay. We're right along. Um, we got these back in stock. This Yay. was the OLEDs, and uh, they're back in stock. We have more in. Yeah. People love these. There are little mini OLEDs. These are SPI. They're five volt friendly. You can use them with three volt, five volt. They don't care. Uh, they use only like ten to twenty milliamps, so they're super small and very crisp, very high uh, resolution for the size uh, and high contrast. Yeah, that's back in it. All right, and then um, th we announced this and launched it last week. This is, and it's um, we're selling these really fast. These are the, and they're on sale. Mm -hmm. um, this is the RFID NFC, NFC shield yeah. uh, for Arduino, and uh, we actually have a video, so we're going to play that video real quick. Yay. Today we'll be getting started with the NFC shield from Adafruit. It's perfect for all of your RFID and other near-field communications projects. Like many of our kits, the NFC shield requires just a little bit of soldering. All the surface mount components have already been picked and placed, but you need to attach some header pins in order to nest it onto your Arduino. I'm going to use stacking headers since the NFC shield doesn't use very many pins, and I might want to put another shield on top of it. I'm using a little bit of masking tape to hold the header pins in place before flipping the board over to solder them on. Much like soldering an IC, you should use a couple anchor pins on the ends in case you need to reposition the strip of headers. Then you can go ahead and fill in all the rest, without the help of the masking tape. We work 
worked really hard on the layout and antenna for the NFC shield so that you could read tags from the maximum possible distance away. That's about four inches. See how the antenna doesn't have any electronics inside it and it doesn't even rest on top of the Arduino board at all. In order to program some tags, plug in your USB cord and set a tag on top of the antenna. You can download the Arduino library from GitHub. Open up the format sketch and load it onto your Arduino. Open the serial monitor running at 115200 baud and follow the instructions on screen to program your tag. Since I can program the tag with a URL, an email address, and many other types of information, I'm going to use mine as a virtual business card and put it in the back of my Hackerspace Passport. By default, the sketch programs a URL, but we've provided lots of examples for other protocols and all you need to do is uncomment the one you want to use. So here, I'm going to program an email address by uncommenting the email prefix. Near field communication is an extension of RFID and many phones come equipped, usually used for cashless payment, but you can see here that I can read the tag I just wrote with any NFC phone. Since you put the information in the sketch, you can program cards rapid fire style by just hitting the enter key and changing out the tag. This is great for when you want a lot of the same thing if you're making RFID enabled posters or business cards to give away. And remember that because I use stacking headers, I can add another shield on top of the NFC shield, like this wave shield for audio output. You can learn more about the NFC shield at adafruit.com. And please show us your NFC projects. You can leave a video response. Okay. Yes, that's a video showing off yeah. um, the cool ability for NFC enabled phones like the Nexus and the uh, Galaxy phones, I believe. Um, if you put them next to a programmed or uh, uh, MyShare tag, you'll read the tag, and if it's formatted in a certain way, you can go to a website or email someone or call someone. So it's kind of like a cool digital business card. Someone wants to know when I modify your code and then I call it my uh, can I call can I then call it my own and then use the open license. This is a good question for the questions. Yeah. That doesn't really have to do with the NFC show. Yeah, no, I thought they meant it for the NFC show. No. Um, In general, no, you cannot call it your own. Yeah, so the, the NFC Shield <laughs> the, the NFC Shield um, can do a couple different things. Uh, it can talk to other NFC Shields. It can talk to phones with NFC directly. But um, the most of the example code we have right now is reading and writing tags. The little tags we have can store up to 1K of EEPROM space. And so you can program them like up to 100,000 times, or you can just program them once like business cards or posters, and then when people touch them with their phones, it'll take them to a web page or an email address yeah. or... There's like an FTP site, you know, encoded okay. as well. We're going to keep moving fast. Uh, this is our little component container. I like this. Yeah. We, um, so we have a bunch of these that we do not sell, that we uh, sampled all of them out there that everyone sells until we found kind of standard, the best one. This is kind of a standard type of box. But yeah. I like this one because it's got a... There's a million ways to get the wrong one. It's got these nice snappy the snaps. Right yeah. And, I'll, and actually, I'll, I'll show something real quick. So these snaps um, are the ones that you want because they do not break off. And uh, this is a super sturdy and it's case. It's also got a good, really it's not like a, it. it doesn't have a live hinge, it has like a real hinge, yeah. which is really nice. I still, I mean like, I wouldn't necessarily like throw it off a building and it would survive. I would put a rubber band around it if yeah. you want to really stay closed, yeah. but they're very good. Yeah, and if you want to um, make them ESD safe, you can put foam or you use a little uh, anti stand yeah. bag in there. Okay. okay, if you want to make it ESD, I just cut a piece of foam out and then stick it in there and that'll, that'll do it. Or just keep your parts that are, uh, are static sensitive in an anti-static bag. Yeah. Except, these are the stars of the show tonight. These are the displays. These are awesome, gorgeous displays. The first one is the two... Yeah. Point two yeah. Let me All see. right. This is it. So, um, here's the front, the back. Yeah, so these are 2.2 inch diameter uh, diagonal uh, displays. These oh, do 18-bit color. The example code we have is 16-bit because it's easier for the Arduino to deal with, but they do handle 16-bit color. This is a picture of a rose that is stored on the um, SD card on the back, uh, and it's fairly, you know, fast. Um, it's the sc screens get this big. You kind of want to use hardware SPI. This is a nine-bit SPI display, but you can still use hardware SPI and just, you know, turn it on and off for like a, a single bit, and then write eight bits in a row. And um, yes, yeah, so you can draw bitmaps. You can do like everything in our Adafruit graphics library, like drawing lines and squares and circles and text and all that good stuff. Okay. And next up we have a new Arduino shield. We also have um, 
we took the 1.8-inch display, which is smaller but fits a lot better on the top of an Arduino, and we turned it into a shield. We have a breakout for this, but we thought that it would also be nice to have something that was very yeah. easy to just get going. This is powered properly. So um, the nice thing about this display is it also has a little uh, knob five-way diagonal uh, um, directional button here. And so um, the demo code just waits until you press on the buttons. You can go up, down, left, right, or you can press select. And then this code, when it press selects, it draws a picture of a parrot. OK. <laughs> and I have two questions. The first one, um, a common question people always ask is, can these type of displays do video? Uh, no, an Arduino isn't fast enough to do video. The display, the display theoretically could, yeah. and um, somebody hooked one of these up to a beagle bone, the, the shield, but just the yeah. display, and, and you can do could video. Could the breakout board, for instance, do? It, there's no reason you can't. Yeah. It's, it's definitely fast enough to do video, just the Arduino can't yeah. type. Like, you can see how long it takes for it to draw one image. Um, then, um, it's fairly fast for such a slow 8-bit display, but it's not fast enough to do video. And then someone wants to know what speed are you using the SPI on the 2.2 inch display? What speed? I don't know. Stop my hand. You can look yeah. at the code if you want. Yeah, check out the code. Okay. All right. Yeah. So micro SD navigation switch, 5-volt uh, yeah. shifter, and a nice display. The 2.2 doesn't fit as nicely on top of here, and also you know you wouldn't have space. You can see like. There's the display and then the micro SD and then that's the end of the, the space. And so we want if you want to have everything fit yeah. nicely, it's a little tough. And if someone wanna know the refresh rate, where would they go for that information? Uh, in the data sheet for the display itself. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that's new products yeah. for the week. That was a big week. Whew.